Welcome along everybody. Today I'm going to be showing you how I made this card which I've called Coming Into Land. And I used, you can see I've already taped down the uh, larger part of the frame circle Magic Mask. I printed these out so you can see them better. I'm using the Owl from the Water's Edge stamp set. I'm using this stamp here from the Field Florals stamp set. I'm using the grasses from the Beach Trail set. And lastly, I'm using the small grass stamp from the Texture set. Okay, I'm gonna get going. So um, you can see I've cut a piece of A4 copier paper um, just, uh, just with a wavy line um, to give me um, a riverbank shape. So what I'm going to do is take my olive green and I'm going to just put a little bit of uh, removable tape on the back of this just to hold it in place for the time being. So we're going to place this just a little bit above halfway up, about there, like that. And then I'm going to take my olive green and um, what I'm going to do at first is just mark out the water's edge. So the, the where the riverbank meets the water. So I'm just doing a very quick line with the olive green. Um, I'll Like always, I'll put a full list of the inks and the stamps and stents I use on the comment section. So I'm just going to put that along there. And then I'm just going to move that down a little bit. And then just put a line in there as well. So that this is um, the bottom of the bank where the, the bank meets the water. And really, this is just a guide um, while we fill in the rest of our picture. I'll go back to this later and, and fill it in properly. OK, so now you, you can see I've got um, two distinct lines. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit of my royal blue now, royal blue is um, a strong colour. I use it a lot for skies, but it is a strong colour. So I'm just going to rub most of the colour off onto a piece of scrap paper. And then I'm just going to put in some. And, and if you do this and just this is the way I do skies, are just little swirly motions. And then what you'll find is the clouds sort of create themselves in between the colour. Just going to move my finger like that. Now, don't overwork this to start with because you can always go back and put some colour in later. And the sky is not, you know, it's not the main focus of our picture. So it's really just to give us a, more a guide. And um, that's enough for now. OK. And then I am going to start on the water because I want to um, I want to stamp the owl in. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to turn this upside down. It doesn't really matter. It doesn't match exactly because the... I, there's going to be a little bit of a gap between the water's edge and the bank anyway. So, OK, so I'm going to start off with my um, Versicolor Olive. And I'm going to just shade along across the line of the water. And I'm, I'm doing this quite lightly. Olive's quite a light colour anyway. If you're using a, a brand new ink pad, it's a bit juicy. Just do that. And then because <clears throat> I think I've said to you before, um, in all my videos, when you're shading, you, you know, it's best to just sort of build up the layers because it's very difficult to take away with these inks. So um, you can pile them down a little bit with lighter colours. But, um, you know, if you just take your time and um, start off with the paler colours and then you can always go in over the top of them if, if you're not happy. OK, so you can see I'm just going in a sort of round the outside of the stencil and across the top and I'm leaving a little bit of a gap in the middle because I want that to stay light. That's where our flexion is going to be. Oh. <laughs> um, OK, I'm just going to just lift the paper up and have a look. Don't worry about that. Is there? We can put that back in later. And yeah, that's OK. So I'm now going to go in with um, the Versacraft Pine, which is slightly darker but light, sorry, lighter colour, um, slightly stronger ink. So I'm just going to go back over where I've 
been. And if you, you see what I have now, I picked up a little bit too much of the ink on the on the baby wipe and it's left a mark. But don't worry about that because we can cover that up later, either with white paint or with shading, so I'm not bothered. But what I will do is just run it off onto here to make sure that doesn't happen again. And then take that down to the bottom there. Try and keep these strokes going in one direction and, and even. You want this nicely blended. And then I'm going to take a little bit of sand beige and just work it up through the bottom. I'm only using it on this part of the picture and very slightly over where our reflection is going to be. Like that. And um, the reason is because obviously in water you, you, you get, you know, there's silt at the bottom, there's mud from the bank. So it wouldn't uniformly be green. The green is more reflecting what's around it. So we're trying to get a little bit of authenticity just with the colours. But if you don't feel confident doing this, don't worry. Just colour it in the greens. And then I'm going to take a little bit of the Versacraft Evergreen, which is a very dark green. And so I'm just going to rub it off on here. And particularly under this bank, where it will be darker in real life, I'm going to run that along there. Do you see what I'm doing? I'm dabbing it onto the pad, rubbing it off onto the scrap paper and then rubbing it along there like that. And then down, down the sides. Like that. Uh, just a little bit more, I think. And then every now and again, if you just lift the paper and you can sort of see how you're getting on. I think my paper slipped slightly, can you see? So I'm just going to move that back up and go back with the green along there to hide that line a little bit. Obviously, I always say to you in these videos, I'm sort of rushing a little bit because, you know, nobody wants to sit and watch a two hour video, which is, you know, some of these cards don't take very long. Some of them, especially the ones that are shaded like this, I, I do take my time over them. So... You know, the idea really is just to show you the technique and then you can adapt it in whichever way you want to. OK, so now I'm going to take a little bit of a first colour cocoa. And again, this is quite a dark colour, so just rub it off onto my spare bit of paper and then just run that up across the bottom like that. Just going to put my tape down, keep catching. And just slightly over this gap here. Now, I don't want to put too much colour in that gap because that's where our reflection of our is going to go. But obviously, I don't want it to be white. So I'm just really gently picking up the colours around it to blend it so you don't get that just white blob in the middle and just blend the edges a little bit. I think that will do for now. We can maybe go back in it later if we need to do it more. So I think that will do for now because now I want to stamp the owl because he's the main feature of this card. So what I'm going to do, I'll bring this piece of paper and you see. Now, luckily, this owl is very symmetrical. Normally, when I'm doing reflections, you stamp them out, stamp them onto a piece of acetate and then turn it upside down. But because this owl is so symmetrical, we don't have to do that. We can double stamp it. So I'll show you what I mean. But... Of, I'm using a Versa Fine Clair for this because it's a permanent ink. We might have to shave around him later, so I don't want it smudging. Now I'm going to use a lot of ink on here. I think that's probably enough. And then I want the owl to be about here. So I'm going to stamp him. Just let the ink soak in a bit. Then pick your stamp up, turn it round, place it with a little gap and then leave the impression one on there for a little bit longer because obviously you've used most of the ink. So you, you want to get an impression and there's your impression. If you find, you see there, the wind hasn't taken slightly. It's no problem. You can just go in with a little bit of the ink later on. Um, I don't think it really matters, but, you know, we might do that later. OK, so now I'm going to go into the top of my picture. So I'm going to use the same piece of paper, put it back, try and line it up where I had it before, which was there. And to start with, I'm going to use the olive green. I'm going to use the olive green just to get an idea 
of where I want my foliage to go. So I'm just going to run it into the general shape like this. Now, the reason I'm using the lighter colour is because really this is just to get give me an idea of how far up I want the landscape to go. Um, you can see where the sky sort of finishes and I'm going to put some uh, wheat grass in the back. So I think that's probably about high enough just to give me a guide and let me just remove that and have a look. And then I'm going to, I've got, um, I've cut two angle pieces here. So I'm just going to place that on there. And again, with the olive, again, this is just a guide. I'm just going to try and mark out that line on there like that. You can just see that faint line. And again, the other side, which I'm going to make slightly higher just to give a little bit of a contrast. And again, I'm just going to mark out that line where one meets the other and I, I, you can bring that down a little bit so it crosses over so it, it looks like a background there okay and then I'm just going to go back in and run that green up a little bit more like that okay then I'm going to take this stamp I'm just going to bring in a piece of paper so you can see what I'm doing. I can do it in here. Um, now, this is going to be sort of the, the background colour, but I don't want these two, you know, the, the very high prongs, really. So what I'm going to do is ink up the whole stamp and just go sort of halfway up there. It doesn't really matter, but it, just to make it look a bit more realistic. And then I'm going to take, I use this one for this side, so I'm just going to take that there like that and I'm only going to use this stuff uh, this stamp halfway up so can you see so most of it's stamping onto the paper so all you get is the tops of the um the wheat sheaths coming out the top and then I'm going to do that I'm going to stamp it again further down like that and then I'm going to go to the other side so I'm going to put in my other piece of paper that I used it doesn't have to be exact because we can go in afterwards and and, and go over it with the green again. So don't worry too much about this. This is this is just for the background. So we're just going to move it up and I'm going to do exactly the same. And you can double stamp if you want to. Um, just going to do that again until we've got the whole back of the picture. Now the reason um, I'm doing this is really just to give the picture a little bit of pers uh, perspective. That's a difficult word to say. <laughs> um, you know, because it, 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 if you put in a background, it throws the foreground forward. And, and because our owl is the most prominent thing in this picture, we want him to be a feature. So we're just going to put in a very subtle background. So I've got the wheat things there. And then I'm going to do, I'm going to clean my stamp off. Just wipe that, this colour off. Dry it off with a, um, a piece of kitchen roll. And then I'm going to use my olive and I'm going to do exactly the same only this time I don't want so much so I'm going to just put my piece of paper there and I'm going to go much further down the paper so that shows a little bit more because that's more in the foreground can you see so I'm just going to do that again and put that one there Like that. Now, if you have trouble doing this on a block, you can remove your stamp. And that way you can manipulate it a bit more. Um, it's a bit messy, but it, it is a good way of... So, like, if I, what I can do now is just sort of put them where I need them. You see what I mean? Like like that. Um, but obviously, if you don't feel confident enough to do that, just keep it on the block. Or you can use the stamping platform. But we really want this to be quite subtle, remember. So maybe stamp out onto a piece of paper first um, before you um, use your platform um, to stamp it back down again. OK, I'm just going to wipe my hands. So now we've got that part of the background in. 
I want to add, I'm just making sure my that's in place. Now I want to put in these contours a little bit more, a, a little, make them a little bit stronger, sorry. So I'm going to start off with the Versacraft Pine and I'm going to work from the front. Now this is where our grasses are going to be. And I'm going to make them a lighter green because they're nearer us. And, and which make them more prominent. So I'm just going to either side. I'm just, you see, I'm just going to put that in there, and then just take that colour a little bit into the background over the olive, just a bit more like that. Don't worry about obscuring these lines that you've already done because we're going to go over that. As long as you can still sort of get the idea where they are, and even if you can't, it doesn't matter because um, you can just go in with new ones with with paper. OK, so now I'm going to take my evergreen and this is a dark green and I'm using this because what this will do is make a, a sort of shadow which will separate. I'm just trying to line that up. Sorry, that goes there. Which will give the eye, throw everything behind it into the background. That's the hope. So I'm just going to run that down this line. Could take that right down to there and then just blend up gently into the grasses that you've already stamped. And if I remove that way, you see what I mean? That just immediately throws that into the background. And I'm going to do the same on this side. So the when you first put the ink on, Rub it onto the paper and then rub the line first, like this, get the line right. And then whatever ink you have left, just gently rub it up into the, the grasses behind, which you see why it didn't really matter if we hadn't stumped the grasses. That just gives you an impression there are grasses behind. So we've got our two banks there. And then obviously you can put more in if you want to. I'm going to just put in another little one, a little contour here for the time being, because I want to stamp my grasses. So we might um, have a look later. And I want to put in a little undulation across the middle here, where I'm going to put some grass and uh, just a little contour mark here. Right, I think that will do for now, because obviously when we put our grasses in, um, we'll have a better idea of where it needs to go. And now I'm just going to replace this because you see where the gap is, where I did the water. So I'm just going to make that a little bit neater. And I'm going to go in with the evergreen this time, just run it along the bottom of this, um, the, the paper we've cut, like that, and then run it gently up into the top. So you don't obscure the line you've got, you want to keep that line, but um, obviously we want to, you know, we want to define the riverbank. Now, obviously, the riverbanks, that part of the riverbank isn't going to be entirely green. Uh, we're going to add a little bit of brown into it. So I'm going to take some pine cone and you can use this on top of the green you've already used on your baby wipe because, you know, it, it, we, we're going to need to blend it together. So we're just going to run that um, along there like that. And just gently, you see where the two lines meet, you can run it over because obviously where the grasses are there's going to be a little bit of mud along there as well so we can run it just up there as well now i'm going to have a look at that i've still got a bit of a gap along there don't worry about that because we're going to put a white line along there anyway but if you if you're you know you want to just cover up you can like that and we're probably going to go in and make that a little bit darker anyway but i want to get my grasses in next so luckily for us, <laughs> um, I'm going to use this piece of paper here. The grasses are the same as the owl. They're, they're very symmetrical, really. So I'm not going to bother to do the acetate technique this time. I'm going to use Versafine Claire Shady Lane. Now, I'm using these Versafine Claire's for the stamping in the water because we might go over it later and these won't smudge. So it's quite important uh, tip. Um, to use the Versafine Claire on these, not the normal verse colour, because you might find that will blend in when you start, if you need to do any more blending. 
Okay, so I'm going to use, go back to my uneven stencil and I'm just going to place it just a little bit above that line. I want a sort of hollow there. And then I'm not going to use the bottom of the grass. I'm going to just have the bottom of the grass going on the paper. And then I'm going to press hard. And there's a nice impression of the grass. Now, because I want it slightly fuller than that, Oh, I'll tell you what we can do, because we've already stamped that, what we can do now is just put the paper there and go straight down and stamp the imprint into the water, like that, like we did with the owl. Now, I want it slightly fuller than that, so I'm just going to repeat that. But I'm, what I'm going to do is do one side at a time, so I don't. it doesn't sort of obscure what we've already done. So, sorry, put my piece of paper back there, like that. And then I'm going to go in just an angle like that, you see? And then I'm going to turn that upside down because this is the side I've inked. Oh, sorry, put my piece of paper in. And then just use the side I've inked to mark that again. And then I'm going to do exactly the same with the other side. So this time it will be the right hand side. There we go, put that back, go in with the right hand side there, and then mask off there and put this. Now be careful not to obscure the owl, so make sure you leave a gap. But the nice thing about this is it sort of frames um, the owl. And then I'm going to do exactly the same on the other side. So um going to put that there sorry so you can see this technique again just cover the cover with ink move that there put our want a little dip slightly up there and we want it around the same sort of place because this is quite a symmetrical picture so we're going to go there press hard and then turn that up the other way block out the bank and then do your imprint. Just press a little bit harder when you're doing the imprint because obviously you're using the um, used ink. And then we're going to do exactly the same on either side. So I'm just going to stamp one side of it first. Like that, which will be on this one, it will be that side. So in there and then it will go in that corner. Now, obviously, <laughs> I'm rushing and um, take your time. It's worth doing this properly because it gives a lovely frame to the um, owl and the owl's reflection. So I've done. Uh, yeah, that's right. I have done that right. So we're just going to put that back there and then we're just going to fill in that gap there. And go back into the water. And just make sure he's not touching the owl, but put that there. Right. Now, if, if you've missed a little bit, um, you can, you know, you can go back in and try and restamp it or you can fill it in um, with a, a little bit of a marker. I um, probably will because that is quite a big gap. But, you know, to be honest, nobody's, by the time we shaded this again, nobody's going to really notice. So I'm just going to. Well, for some reason, that's not I don't think I've got any ink on there. Let's try again. Yeah, that's better. So I'm just going to try and stamp that again. Okay, so that's the, um, basically that's all the stamping done. So now all the rest is shading. So we're going to go, The it would be good to let that dry for a little while. Um, it doesn't matter so much with the bottom because obviously we're going to blend that a little bit. So what I'm going to do is just go back it back to the water and I'm going to take my evergreen again. And again, I'm going to, you know, it's a dark colour, so just run a little bit off onto a piece of paper so you don't get, you know, big blobs. And then I'm just going to go back along the water's edge. Try and go in one direction when you're doing this because it, it gives it a much smoother uh, steel water finish. And then rub it off again, just go down to the other side. 
like that. Um, don't let now, you know, now we've stamped the L, don't try and go too much over the L now. Um, you can sort of go across the middle a little bit like that, but, um, you know, obviously he's the main focus, so him and his reflection. So we don't want to spoil that too much. And then um, I'm going to add a little bit of the Versacraft Pine just for um, to sort of imitate the light hitting the water um, just every now and again like this. You can see the contrast in the colour. Sometimes it's difficult to see on the video and sometimes I don't use the same colours on the video as I do on the ones I post on the um, Facebook page. But that's sometimes because I haven't got the same colours. But quite often it's because I use colours I think you're going to be able to see better on the, on the video. OK, now I'm going to go in and add some contrast to my um, background. So I'm going to place that just under this piece of grass. I'm going to go back with my evergreen and just blend up around this piece of foliage because I don't want the edge to be a line there. I, I want that to sort of disappear. So I'm going to be quite going quite dark around it and then just take that gently up into the background like that. And then if you take that away, you can see what I'm doing there. It's So that looks like it's down in growing out of the ground rather than just a line across there. Um, these little bits here are going to have grass on them, so don't worry about too much about those. And I'm just going to go back in with the green because I think that could be a little bit darker. You're right, that's fine. And then I'm going to do exactly the same on this side. You see, you, you see that that's a straight line there. And although we obviously masked off the bottom, it wouldn't look like that in, naturally. So we're just going to obscure that a little bit. And we're going to take that gently back into the background and run it across there. So the colours sort of blend together, but you've still got a contrast. And then I'm just going to take that round there because when we take the stencil off, we want sort of to know where the edge of the picture is. And I'm going to do the same that side, actually. You can draw a black line around this while the stencil is still on, but I don't really think it suits this picture. So if we make sure we define it like that, then we, we won't have to do that. And I might put a little bit more blue in the, in the sky later. Right, OK, so now all we need to do is just define these lines at the back a little bit more now as well. Um, just gently. It doesn't matter you're going through the grasses because we've used the first fine. It, it won't matter. Um, it won't move that now. It's stamped. Now you can see the difference that makes. It just throws that all backwards. And just using different colours, it just gives you texture. It just makes you think that there's layers of sort of foliage there. And I'm just going to take that up there. Now, I think that's enough for the purpose of the video because... Um, you know, we're time limited, but you can spend as much time as that as you want. I'm just going to add a little contour line here because I want to put some grass here. Like that. OK, so now I just need to define my lines a little bit better along the riverbank here. Now I know where the grasses are and I'm happy with that. I'm just going to go back. Along here. Now I'm going to use a black fine liner along here, but it's good to have this marked in in ink like that and then again on the water line i've just got to line it up properly going upwards into the bank so we're just going to go back with our green into the bank like that okay and i'm just going to blend that gently over the top Right, now then have a look and see, you know, I probably could do a bit more shading under here and down there. But I think on the whole, that's it's taking shape now. So what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to wipe my fingers, get the ink off. What I'm going to do now is take my black fire liner and I'm going to run it along the, the water's edge. Now, not in a straight line, just in a broken line. Can you see what I'm doing? I'm just defining it where it where the contours are where it goes in and out just to pick it out and I'm going to do the same and the top only I'm going to go in little v shapes every now and again 
into the top because the river bank isn't a straight line is it you get little contours in and out and then i'm just going to put little striation marks where now they look a bit stark at the moment but i'm just gonna, i'm going to cover them over in brown in a minute so now if you've got you know obviously i'm doing this video quickly but um if you've got brown pencils chalk pencils you can it's much better to do that with with them because then you can blend it and make it look like a proper sort of river bank but obviously for the purpose of the video i'm just gonna I'm just going to do this quickly with black pen and I'm just going to add a few lines there. Now I'm going to add my grass in and I'm using the smallest stamp from the, the grass stamp from the texture set. And I'm going to use the first fine clear again because I might have to blend around them again. So I'll give it a good ink. And again, I'm going to put my stents that uh, my cut piece paper in place. And we don't want the whole of that. We just want about half of it. So. And what I would do if I were you would just, you know, see how high you want it. Start off with it low and then there. Can you see? I probably think I think I'll probably have it a little bit higher here. And the lovely thing about this texture set, this grass, is you can stamp it like that. And then if you want the grass higher, you just stamp it again. And you can make the grass as high as you want and then just blend out these bits in the middle. So, you know, trial and error. And then I'm going to move to the other side to do exactly the same on the other side. I'm just going to, sorry, just going to leave that there. And then I'm going to do exactly the same on that side. Like that. I think that's fine. I'm, I'm just do a tiny little bit here. I want to leave a slight gap, but I'm just going to do a tiny bit there like that. Don't worry if it goes down into there because you probably have the roots going there anyway. And where I did that little, um, mark indentation mark there i'm gonna just take the very tips of the grass and give the suggestion of texture behind that okay now i've done that i'm just going to blend that just i'm just putting that there so it doesn't go i'm just blending that into the river bank itself now, because it dries quite quickly, this ink, you'll probably find um, it's fine. But now what's happened there is you've got a lovely natural line there, which you would get in, a, in a, a river bank. It's not just a straight line, is it? So now I'm going to take my pine cone and where I've where I've done these lines down, I'm just going to take my piece of paper and go over them. I say, if you've, you know, if you've got pencils at home and you'd rather do it pencils, then, you know, anything you want, really, um, anything you want to colour it in. Um, but this is just a quick easy. And then when you've done that, just blend. Oh, I'm getting a bit aggressive there. Just blend the whole thing back in. And, um, you know, you can take as long as this, as long over this as you want. These are the little details on my card. When I'm when I'm doing the originals that I like to spend my time doing because it, I find it very mindful. I think it's very easy to overwork a card though. You know when you're happy with it. I think me and Enid were, were discussing this on the Facebook page the other day. Um, and sometimes you you can actually spoil a perfectly good card because you can't leave it alone. But I think with something like this, um, I think it's nice to just keep going back in and taking your time on this because. As long as you take the colours gently, you know, a little bit at a time, I, d I don't think you, you know, I think that that's probably a good approach. Right, so I'm just toning that down a little bit where the grasses are because there's a bit too much of a contrast. As long as we can still see where the water's, where the line is, that's fine. And I think we're probably nearly there with the riverbank. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so I'm just going to rub that along there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take um, a white Signo pen. Now, the, because they work on a rollable system, they do get clogged up sometimes. So make sure you've got a piece of paper to hand and then just rub it off on there. And because I'm doing this straight onto wet ink, um, it, it, sometimes the flow gets affected a little bit. So bear with me if it does. But I'm just running a, the same broken line along that water's edge. Can you see? That's why it didn't matter that we had a big, big, big gap there. And then we're going to add just some little straight lines 
and the way I do it is either like a run of little small lines like that and then occasionally a longer line and try and keep it quite thin and uh, don't forget don't go over your owl but where your owl reflection is he, that reflection is in the water so he just I mean don't obscure it but you know run some little white lines over the owl as well and then we're going to do some this side now I'm rushing this take your time with this because this is really what marks out the light reflection in the water and makes it look in my opinion makes it look realistic so you know take a bit of time doing this and I'm going to run some at the back there and just at the side of the owl if you do happen to smudge the owl which I did in the first version of this um just go out you know just get either a little paintbrush or and just uh, block out the block out where you've marked it I think that's probably enough for now I think we could do with a few more down here and perhaps like that I think that's enough for the demonstration anyway and then I like to take the black fine liner and this is um a 0 0.1 it's a very fine fine liner. I don't use anything too thick and just every now and again just underline a couple of these just to make them stand out now if you find you overdo it just go back over it with a white pen and then where I've done the bank I'm just going to go back over that now over the top just to mark that out better I think just a little bit more at the end there like that and then I like to just run a bit up into the grass just for a bit of continuity and, and a, a bit of a sharper division um, and this is what I mean when you're you know if you're doing this at home just let go, go and have a cup of tea or something when you've done the stamping and let it dry because it's quite difficult to um, use these pens over wet ink they don't really uh, respond very well as you can see but I, you know you get the idea there I think that's that's okay for demonstration purposes and then I'm going to take my Signo pen again my white Signo pen and I'm just going to run a few little lines like that now that comes out very white so just blend it in do it when it's wet so do one side at a time and then we're going to just highlight highlight the grass a little bit and again just blend that in a little bit and then do the same the other side like that And, you know, if you overdo this or you um, it dries too quickly and you can't blend it in, so it ends up looking like that. Don't worry, just go over with a little bit of green ink and then stamp the grass back over it. Right, I think that's um, that's enough now. Now, I always say to you, look at your picture and is there anything you can do to it? And the only thing I think I would probably do for this for the demonstration purposes I mean obviously if I wasn't filming this I'll be fiddling around with it for hours <laughs> but I'm going to take a little bit of the um, pine colour and I'm just going to run it up into the background here because that looks too much like too much of one colour so I'm just going to add just where the sun might be hitting it a little bit just every now and again just to give it a little bit more texture like that. That, that I'm, I'm pleased with that now okay so because of what I said to you about uh, defining this when you take the stencil off I am going to add a little bit more blue to the sky but it doesn't really matter I mean you know you'll get the idea of the circle and um, you know don't overdo it but see I'm just gonna there and there just make that a little bit darker you don't have to use blue for the sky you know if you want to have a gray sky or it's entirely up to you uh, and in fact all these colors you know these my the videos i make are really just to show you the techniques i use um the way you interpret them and the way you use them is, is entirely up to you i always say uh wendy and cardio make artists of us all and i really do mean that don't ever think you can't do anything because you know it's just time and practice 
Now, I think the only other thing I do is just put a little bit more grass across there because I've obscured some of it where I cut it in the bank. So I'm just going to put my stencil back and just add a few more. I think a bit more over that side. And again, I'm doing this in the VersaFine Claire, so it stamps over the ink that's already there. Yeah, that's better. In fact, now that side's made, showed up the other side. So, um, you see, this is what I'm like. It's terrible. <laughs> I'm trying to keep this short to make it watchable. Right, I think that's fine. So I'm just going to clear everything out of the way. I think, on the whole, the that gives you an idea of how I made this card. Um, but if you noticed on the original, I'm just going to wipe my hands because um, obviously I've got a little bit of ink on them. Now, on the original, I put a border around this one. You don't have to, but it's quite simple to do because we've already we've got the frame down. What I'm going to do is take a little bit of scrap paper. Now, I've got one of these that I use and I'm just seeing what colours on it because I'm not I don't really want to put too much colour on it, but it hasn't got much green on. So I'm just going back to the olive. I'm just going to rub that off a little bit till I get a nice smooth finish. Right, that'll do. And then I'm going to peel off this paper. So I'm going to peel off that bit and that bit and that bit like that. And then I'm going to just hold on to my stencil because I've removed some of the tape that's holding it and just run a bit of colour down there and then I'm going to do the same here now bearing in mind the more you take off the more your stencil is going to move so make sure you hold on to it run that across there and if you want to you can pick up a bit of the green you've used from the actual stencil itself but you don't want this too dark so don't ink up your you know don't go and after you finish your card don't go and fill it full of ink and then you've got a great big dark line around it I think that you know would be too much and then down this side Just gently get the colour off the brush. And then we've got one more. One more to do. And then run that along the bottom. Now, it looks quite pale, doesn't it? But when I take the stencil off, it just gives it a nice frame. And because we're not drawing a line around the actual circle, I think it's a nice way to um, finish this card. But, you know, you don't have to do this. It's entirely up to you. OK, I think that's enough. I'm just going to move, remove that. And now you can see. And I think the fact I could blend it more, but I actually think there's a little bit of white left there. But I think the fact that it is a little bit blotchy lends itself to this picture. And so I'm going to leave it like that. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, this was my original card. And you can see I've spent a little bit more time colouring this. Um, but I hope you get an idea of the techniques I used and uh, thank you for joining me. I hope to have you along the next time.